Today we're going to talk about the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire was one of the most formidable states in recorded history, and its history will be the focus of today's discussion. Formerly an empire that lasted until the 20th century, Turkey's ancestor ruled over three continents, Europe, Asia, and Africa, under a single dynasty for a total of 600 years. Although the Ottoman Empire was once highly regarded, its standing in modern times has been diminished due to its long-standing hostility toward Europe beginning in the Middle Ages. Prior to their defeat in World War I, the Ottoman Empire ruled over a sizable portion of the Islamic world. An obscure duchy was the seed from which the world's largest empire grew. The Ottoman Empire was established by its namesake, Osman I, in 1299, and immediately set out on a path of conquest. Rapid territorial expansion occurred from the year 1300 to 1481. Their goal was to completely engulf the crumbling Byzantine Empire. After Osman I died in 1326, his son, Orhan, took over as ruler of Bey. In that same year, he conquered the Silk Road hub city of Bursa and established his first capital there. Orhan, who thought he was still weak, helps Emperor John VI to take advantage of the internal conflict of Byzantium, and John VI associates his daughter Theodora in return. And he just began his full-scale invasion of Europe in 1354, when he conquered Gallipoli. The Ottoman Empire began its 50-year siege of the Byzantine Empire at this time, and it grew like a typhoon, eventually reaching Serbia. After Orhan's death in 1362, his successor, Murad I, was even more aggressive in his pursuit of European expansion. Once the capital of the Byzantine Empire, Edirne was renamed after it swallowed Adrianople and became the seat of the Ottoman government. The Byzantines were taken aback, but Murad I decided to exercise indirect, gentlemanly rule over the conquered region. The existing monarchs are recognized in exchange for tribute and military aid in times of crisis. It was helpful to be able to quickly assemble the military forces needed for conquest and to put down any uprisings among the conquered populace. This meant that even after Murad I, Ottoman foreign policy followed the same basic plan. Protect the lives and property of existing monarchs while also respecting their culture and traditions. Since its attack on Gallipoli in 1352, the Ottoman duchy has established a firm foothold in the Balkans. The focus of the blade shifted to Constantinople, the remnants of the shattered Byzantine Empire's beating heart. Bayezid I succeeded Murad, and his reputation as a brilliant military leader spread far across Europe and the Islamic world. His empire was wiped out by the Mongols, but the Abbas Caliph, who retained only his name, recognized his rise to power within Islam and bestowed upon him the title of Sultan. Nonetheless, Sultan Bayezid faced an ominous destiny. Timur, the rising powerhouse of Central Asia, posed a formidable challenge that we had to meet head on. In 1402, Timur and the Ottoman Empire fought on the plains of Ankara, and the Ottomans suffered a crushing defeat. Bayezid was captured and executed by Timur's forces. Thus, the Ottoman Empire was plunged into crisis, and Bayezid's son engaged in a power struggle for the throne. There were 11 years of fighting. Thus, Mehmed I succeeded to the throne of the Sultanate. After a period of limited control by Mehmed, his successor Murad II began to reassert Ottoman independence. Murad II strengthened the Ottoman navy and trained an elite Janissary army. Therefore, they gambled on a European Union composed primarily of the Byzantine Empire, the Venetian Republic, and Hungary. Mehmed II, a man with the personality of a stage gun, succeeded Murad. Mehmed II succeeded his father while his father was still alive, was dethroned, and then returned to the throne in 1451 at which point he brutally murdered his brother. All throughout human history, you can find examples of brothers killing brothers in a power struggle. 
However, this was an isolated incident and not a statutory mandate. But Mehmed used the law to legitimize the killing of his own brothers. Ordinary people couldn't be killed, but the Sultan had the right to murder his own brothers. The ambition of Mehmed was tremendous. He believed that by seizing control of the Byzantine Empire, he could create the vast empire that his forefathers had envisioned. The battle for Constantinople marks the beginning. There was internal resistance from ministers and aristocrats, but Mehmed's will was unwavering. The Ottoman Empire had already encircled the Byzantine Empire, leaving only its capital city of Constantinople untouched. Truth be told, the Byzantine Emperor had only one place he called home, and it wasn't even in Constantinople. The problem was the castle, which dated back over a thousand years. Constantinople was essentially an iron fortress thanks to the double-triple walls that encircled the triangular city. Seven previous attempts by the Arabs to take Constantinople had all failed. The entire castle was a holy fortress that stood strong for over a millennium. To breach such an impregnable stronghold, a new type of weapon was required, and so the first heavy weapon in human warfare was born. A Hungarian engineer built the massive bronze cannon, which could propel a 500-kilogram stone over 1.5 kilometers. Additionally, Mehmed II began construction on a fortress known as Rumeli Hizar in 1451. The Bosporus Strait, the last open crossing on the Silk Road, is where the fortress is located. To exert economic pressure on the Byzantine, Venetian, and Genoese governments, a fortress was constructed in this location to prevent the free passage of their ships into and out of Constantinople. Furthermore, it could have stopped the Christian world from helping Constantinople during the siege by the Ottoman army. After preparing for the invasion for some time, Sultan Mehmed finally marched into Constantinople in 1453. They first tried to negotiate a peaceful surrender with the Byzantine Emperor, but he refused, at which point the Ottomans opened fire with their cannons. At the same time, the sea was making an attempt to enter the Golden Horn. The problem was that the entrance to the Golden Horn Strait was blocked by a thick chain that no ship could pass through without being pierced. So Osman devised a brilliant strategy. The Golden Horn is located in the mountains, so let's take the boat there. In other words, it was an original take on a common theme. To be more specific, they used the strength of a bull to pull the boat up the hill and into the Golden Horn at night by placing an oiled round wooden rail beneath the boat. That's why the next morning, the Golden Horn was suddenly flooded with 67 Ottoman ships. The strategy of, the ship goes to the mountains, will be remembered for years to come. After firing 5,000 stone shells at the walls, Ottoman cannons eventually succeeded in breaching them officially ending the Eastern Roman Empire's rule in 1453. The Christian community in Europe suffered a devastating loss. Historians generally agree that this marked the end of the Middle Ages and the start of the modern era in Europe. Istanbul was renamed by Sultan Mehmed from Constantinople, and he made it the capital of the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire enjoyed another glorious golden age for another century until the late 16th century. In accordance with Islamic custom, the lands that Mehmed conquered in the Byzantine Empire were open to people of all faiths. As a result of the Sultan's policy of religious tolerance, Istanbul has developed into a metropolis where the Black Sea and the Mediterranean Sea converge with the cultures of the East and West and Islam and Christianity. It was heralded as a repository of human ingenuity and a museum of civilization. Cold-blooded, Selim I begins his reign in 1512. He was crowned with blood. After taking over for his father, Badejid as Sultan, he promptly had his rival brothers and nephews put to death. All potential royal challengers to the Sultan's rule were also eliminated. By attacking the Shiite Safavid Empire and the Mamluk dynasty, Selim hoped to protect true Sunni Islam. In 1514, 
he toppled the Safavid Empire in eastern Persia, and in 1516, he overthrew the Mamluk dynasty in the south. Modern weapons, such as Ottoman gunpowder and muskets, shattered the reputation of the Middle Ages that the Mamluk had previously enjoyed. It was at this time that al-Mutawakkil, the last caliph of the Abbasids, ceded control of the caliphate to the Ottoman Empire. As a result, the Ottoman Empire became the de facto caliphate of Islam in 1516. From that time until the official abolition of the caliphate in Turkey in 1922, Istanbul was the undisputed capital of the Sunni Muslim world. The Islamic holy sites of Mecca and Medina were also occupied by the Ottoman Empire during the time of the Mamluk dynasty's fall in Egypt. In this way, Selim unified the two holy cities of Mecca and Medina under his rule, establishing Sunni communities throughout Eurasia and the rest of Asia. From 1520 onward, during the reign of Suleiman I, the Ottoman Empire expanded to its greatest size and flourished. In particular, there was no need to impose new taxes on the subjects and bureaucrats of the empire because the national finances increased significantly as a result of the conquest of the world. This allowed King Suleiman I to become the most powerful and prosperous Ottoman Sultan in history. And it was decided that Central Europe would be the next target of the thriving Ottoman Empire. The Habsburgs were the strongest European royal family in Central Europe. Suleiman conquered Budapest, turned Hungary into a vassal state, and then marched into Austria in 1529, besieging Vienna and the seat of the Habsburg dynasty. In this way, the centuries-long conflict between the Habsburg Empire and the Ottoman Empire has finally been resolved. In 1532, Suleiman led an expedition to Austria and returned with over 100,000 captives and a vast amount of loot. Sea battles between the Ottoman Empire and European powers continued. In 1538, Suleiman's appointment of Barbarossa, a pirate from the North African coast, as the Ottoman Navy's supreme commander led to his defeat of a fleet from the European Union in the eastern Mediterranean. The war broke out in Preveza and a new ruler of the Mediterranean Sea has arisen. The Ottoman Empire during King Suleiman's rule, the Ottoman Empire was at the height of its power. Tricontinental as he was, Europeans referred to him as the Great Suleiman, while Turks referred to him as Sultan Suleiman, a legislator. Suleiman, who earned the moniker, legislator, is credited with overhauling imperial administration. As the moon began to fall in the 17th century, the Ottoman Empire, which had reached its zenith in the middle of the 16th, began to decline. The Sultan's authority within the empire was eroding as aristocrats and local lords rose to prominence, and society was in disarray as a result of events like Janissaries' Rebellion, the imposition of oppressive taxes on newly acquired territory, and the involvement of corrupt officials in both the military and the bureaucracy. Corrupt practices were especially pervasive in the armed forces. In addition, he lost the control of the Mediterranean Sea to Admiral Espana and a combined fleet in 1571. This culminated in the Battle of Lepanto. They have since lost much of their territory, including Hungary. Consecutive bombings disrupted the economy. The Ottoman army often lost when pitted against the superior forces of Europe. Traditional Ottoman industries and trade have suffered as a result of inflation, and the national treasury is noticeably empty. Ottoman manufacturing is on the verge of collapse due to the influx of low-priced but high-quality European goods into the market thanks to free trade agreements. But the Ottoman Empire remained a danger to Europe until the early 17th century at the earliest. After quelling domestic unrest, the Ottomans pressed on with their conquests in Anatolia and Europe. The second battle between the Ottoman Empire and the Habsburgs broke out in 1683, and the Ottomans were soundly defeated. 80,000 Christian allied forces of the Holy Alliance fought against 150,000 Ottoman soldiers in the Second Battle of Vienna. 
It's often cited as the largest clash between mounted forces in recorded history. The Islamic world had its last chance to conquer Europe when it arrived in 711 but Christian Europe was able to pull through a dire situation. Vienna was the center of the Austro-Habsburgs, Europe's strongest country at the time, and their fall would have spelled disaster for the continent. On the one hand, the full-scale conflict that erupted between the two civilizations offered a golden opportunity to advance mutual cultural understanding. Beans were among the many supplies abandoned by the retreating Ottoman army. In the wake of the Turkish coffee beans introduction, Vienna's coffeehouse population exploded, and the empty café trend quickly swept across Europe. But soon, new issues arose in Europe as time ticked on. There was a power vacuum after the Ottomans withdrew from the Balkans, which marked their European border. European countries seized the opportunity and began to engage in fierce competition. Until the Ottoman Empire collapsed after World War I, interests in the Balkans and West Asia, known as Eastern Issues, remained a central issue in European politics. The Ottoman Empire attempted a modern reform program known as Tanzimat, but it was no match for the European powers that dominated the colonial era in terms of civil consciousness and industrial technology. The Ottoman Empire's alignment with Germany, Austria, and their allies during World War I was crucial. During World War I, the Ottoman Empire grabbed the rotten rope and promptly lost. Thus, the Arab community, which had previously coexisted peacefully in the region for a long time, was divided into 22 separate countries after the disappearance of the Islamic world leadership from the map. It was because of Britain's contradictory villainy that the Palestinian issue arose. The complex divisions and wars of the Muslim slaughter in Bosnia and the Russian invasion of Chechnya are all historical repercussions of the Ottoman Empire's demise. After 623 years of rule, the Ottoman Empire came to an end in 1922 with the deposition of Sultan Mehmed VI. In 1923, the Turkish Republic was founded, and from there, Turkestan emerged. Turkey Historically, this is how the Ottoman Empire unfolded. This is the story of the Ottoman Empire. If you liked this video, don't forget to click that red subscribe button and give me a thumbs up.